Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week. On Friday last, about 281 trainees graduated from the Ministry of Labor's Board of Industrial Training BIT programs. The graduates were presented with their accredited certificates in various courses at the ceremony held at Outback Adventures, Kanji Burbis, Region 6. The certificates were distributed by Minister of Labour Joseph Hamilton, Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honourable Manzur Nadir, Chairman of Region 6, David Armagon, and Chief Executive Officer of BIT, Richard Mon. One skilled person is a dying breed. Five to ten years from now, you with one skill, you're dying breed. You have to be multi-talented and multi-skilled. So when a door is closed, you can walk into another door. Aside from the training, BIT liaised with the Central Recruitment and Manpower Agency to offer jobs to interested graduates. Students from the Abramsville Secondary School in Region 2, Pomeroon, Supernam, will be relocated to a facility in Joanna, Cecilia for face-to-face -face learning. This decision was made at a meeting on Friday with parents and Minister of Education Priya Manikchan. Minister Manikchan said in order to serve the students, some inconvenience will occur. We don't want to be in a position where we're struggling to find space for an entire school, but it is what it is. And with development will come some level of inconvenience for a short time. Minister Manikchan assured that she will be meeting with the contractors to ensure that the project is not delayed. The Abram Zool Secondary School is currently on the construction. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development Nigel Darmlal spearheaded the disbursement of flood relief grants to farmers in Blairmont and Ithaca. The farmers were affected by record levels of rainfall, which destroyed crops and livestock across the country. Minister Darmlal said the government recognizes the struggles farmers were dealing with over the past few months due to the flooding. We are going to do some additional canals that will take move water from south the north and into the Barbies River and in some cases the Atlantic Ocean so that we don't have this problem as we had recently and we would have had quite a number of times over the last few years. Over at Cotton Tree and Rosignol West Coast Barbies, some $46 million in checks were distributed to farmers part of the government's ongoing efforts to help farmers rebuild after unprecedented nationwide flooding. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat, who led the distribution at the Cotton Tree and Rosignol Primary Schools, reminded the farmers that the government will continue to work with them. We will not make the same mistake as in the past, that we will continue coming to our people, we will continue engaging you, we will continue to work with you so that you can live a better life. At the two locations, over 380 checks were distributed. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Crow over the past weekend visited Letham to overlook the progress made on the new Ghana Water Incorporated and Central Housing and Planning Authority Regional Office that is being constructed there. During the visit, Minister Kroll said he was very pleased with the progress thus far. I'm happy about the progress that I've seen so far. I'm also happy that we will have them under one building to be able to serve um, our ministry, the services that we provide um, under the Ministry of Housing and Water. So you have over 57 villages that will the services will be provided for, um, for water. Both the new Guyana Water Incorporated and the Central Housing and Planning Authority offices will offer services in an independent way as the CHPA will no longer share the same space at the Regional Democratic Council and the building for GWI will no longer be one that is rented. On Monday, a total of $110 million in contracts was signed to aid in the rehabilitation of the Ridge and Zelandia roads on the island of Wakenham Region 3. The contract signing was facilitated by a minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Dida Tindar, and Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Nigel Darmlal. His Excellency and the PPPC government has taken a formidable approach to developing the roadways on the island. Whilst we are campaigning, residents in both of these areas have been reaching out to different leaders of our government and party at that time. Uh, so today is a manifestation of our commitment 
to the greater development of, of this island we can The Ministry of Agriculture on Monday received some 11,500 packets of seeds from the Inter-American Institute of Cooperation on Agriculture to assist farmers. First of all, I would also like to thank you and all those persons who, have, who would have made donation, especially from Brazil, with these seeds. This here will help us tremendously because with this donation, we will ensure that farmers receive this. And also, as you are donating these seeds today, we are in the midst of rolling out monetary, monetary relief to farmers across the country. So whilst we are giving them monetary relief, we will also help them give them planting materials too, because we want them to get back to the land as quickly as possible. Approximately $281 million in contracts for the rehabilitation of roads in Regions 6 and 9 were signed on Tuesday. The contract signing was facilitated by Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Deodat Indar, and Minister of Natural Resources, Vikram Bharat. The first contract, valued at over $85 million, was awarded to J.R. Ranch Incorporated for the rehabilitation of the Letham to Anai North Rupununu Road in Region 9. The length of this road is 160 kilometers with a width of 7 meters. Minister Barrett said the government will embark on converting the Linden to Maburu Road into a highway. That's in keeping with our promise um, that we intend to link Guyana to Brazil so that they can boost economic activities not only along that corridor but between the two countries. I am particularly pleased too that we are at this point because the, this stretch or this section of the road um, has a great impact on the logging and mining sectors. On Tuesday, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Antony revealed that 13 pregnant women were hospitalized and being treated for COVID-19 at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. He said the discoveries were made during routine testing. So persons with complicated pregnancy normally would come into the Georgetown Public Hospital. They come from different parts of the country. Uh, so these 13 women, they, they have all tested positive. That's a requirement now. Uh, when you come in, they test you to see whether or not uh, your COVID status to determine that. And so uh, 13 of these women have tested positive and um, we have to make special arrangements uh, for their delivery. Minister we have been seeing an increase in uh, COVID-19 infections among pregnant women. Uh, just the day before, we only had seven, but today we have 13 women who are uh, positive. Minister Anthony said, as predicted because of the Delta surge, more cases of COVID-19 will be seen as the Delta variant is more transmissible. About 500 persons in Region 9 will soon become beneficiaries of the Ministry of Housing and Water's house lot allocation exercise scheduled for October. Minister Colin Kroll says this initiative will see the establishment of a new housing scheme at the Port Bridge in the region. We already have the design, um, so it will form part of our 2022 uh, budgetary program and that is for the infrastructure work. Um, we're looking at probably spending over a billion dollars on that new housing area. And so persons uh, here, um, in the region in general, because it's not only people and persons within Let Them that apply, there are persons within the region mm -hmm. who want to come and live centrally. First Lady, Her Excellency, Mrs. Arya Ali, visited the Bartik Secondary School where she launched her menstrual hygiene initiative. Some 1,168 sanitary napkins were distributed to secondary school girls in that region. Minister of Education Priya Manikchan, who accompanied the First Lady, said period poverty is one of the issues that interferes with gender equality and opportunities for girls. These are the small things that we don't talk about that interfere with the equality the world is trying to achieve. If we have to take away from every girl, five to seven, sometimes longer, because that's what happens with our bodies, and hormones behaving badly and so on, days from your life every month, then you don't have the same opportunities to shine, to grow, to learn. Ongoing works to replace Span 9 on the Demerara Harbour Bridge is about 30% complete. 
This was relayed to Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edgel, when he made a spot check on the progress of the works on Wednesday. Span 9 is one of the retractors on the bridge, which is in a dilapidated condition. The $1.2 billion repair work is being undertaken by Infab. Everything that you see is taking place here now is the cutting of the parts and the preparation for the assembly of that new span. So the big challenge that we have as a government, and that's why I'm here on the ground, we know the importance of the Demra Harbour Bridge. We know if there's no Demra Harbour Bridge, where people can travel, what that will mean. Residents of Good Hope are now enjoying an asphaltic road after Sari Dam in Good Hope, East Coast Demerara was rehabilitated. The road was completed at the cost of $13.3 million. As he commissioned the road on Wednesday, Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel said the rehabilitation of the road is fulfillment of a promise made. When leadership is given, People's pain and suffering could be alleviated. President Irfan Ali and his cabinet commits to the people of Guyana that the way we will govern is not as lords and as rulers, but the way we will govern is by serving people. We will be a government that listens. We are a government that responds. And we are a government that makes decisions for the benefit of people. Minister Agil also inspected ongoing works on the $200 million Cane Grove Main Access Road, East Coast Demerara. The project is being executed by Colin Talbot Contracting Service, and is about 50% complete. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Mohaber Anil Nandlal, has said Ghana's first ever law reform commission will be proactive, not reactive to the changes in legislation that are needed in society. The Attorney General expressed this sentiment following the inaugural meeting of the commission at its Middle Street office on Wednesday. We have had law reform in Guyana being reactive. So something happened, you go and pass a law to correct it. We will try to get this law reform commission to be proactive so that we have legislation in anticipation of and not as a reaction to. The Attorney General said law reform must be done in a scientific way in order to meet the aspirations of society. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony on Wednesday commended all vaccination staff for their hard work and commitment in getting persons immunized against the deadly coronavirus. During the daily COVID-19 update, the minister said some 6,103 persons were vaccinated on Tuesday. This figures the highest vaccination per day. So I think this has set a new record for us in terms of how many persons would have received the vaccine yesterday. And I just want to compliment the staff both of the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, uh, for the work that they've been doing in rolling out this vaccination process. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.